الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واذكر ربك في نفسك تضرعا وخيفة ودون الجهر من القول بالغدو والآصال ولا تكن من الغافلين صدق الله العظيم In the journey of the Quran we have come to Surah Al-A'raf ayah number 205 in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفًا And remember your Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, within yourself, in humility, and in fear. وَخِيفًا And this particular ayah, humility and fear are used in combination. Even though we have said many times that Quran uses different words for believers, one of them is taqwa, which is God consciousness. Here in particular, it talks about the word khifa, the fear. What kind of fear it is? Humility and fear sometimes go hand in hand. For example, if I'm sitting in the masjid and I'm talking to the person next to me, is this, I'm being hum humble enough? Do I have humility? No. If I'm busy conversing or doing other activities while the khutbah is going on, am I doing something nice? No, I'm not doing something nice. If I walk into the masjid and I start shaking hands with the people around me, is this nice while the khutbah is going on? No. If I walk into the masjid and the masjid is full and the people are listening to the khutbah and I start climbing the rows and come all the way in the front, is this nice mannerism? No. If I climb all the way in the front and get in front of the imam, find one spot and say, Allahu Akbar and start praying my nafil or sunnah, is this nice? No. This could be done in the back if you really, really want to do it outside or in the back. But all of these things are against the humility factor. Why? Because you're causing distress. When you cause distress, it is against the humility of other individuals. Because sometimes the rage may take over and they will say something that will go against their humility. In reaction, you will say something that will go against your humility. So fear and humility, the fear for not doing anything wrong towards yourself or towards others and at the same time bringing humbleness in yourself be careful about your surroundings and moving forward that way with the intention of keeping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your heart it's, it's, it's a feeling unexplainable in words that's something that we have to practice to bring in ourselves that's why I see the beauty of the Islam that Salam is not compulsory in the process of handshake alone. Salam can be said with a distance. Like I come over here, I don't have to shake hands with each one of you to say Assalamu Alaikum. I could say from a distance. Shaking hands is okay. Shaking with both hands is okay. Hugging is okay. Mu'anaqa is okay too which is kissing on the forehead. However, shaking hands is not mandatory part. So now we have been hearing in the news that do not shake hands because of the viruses around, they could spread. If you come in close proximity, the people 60 years or older are more in danger than any other age group. So see the beauty of the Qur'an and the Islam and the life of the Prophet Muhammad doesn't lock you down in some parameters when it comes to social norms. 
Even look at the prayer. If you cannot pray standing, you can pray sitting down. If you can't pray sitting down and you can only pray laying down, laying down and pray. If you can't pray with words, pray with gestures. So, in order to make things easy for human beings, because human beings do not stay in the same phase forever. So that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is make things easy for us. But sometimes we get emotional. We have been doing things for such a long time. We think if we don't do it that way, it is not acceptable. However, everything is circumstantial. Now remember the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fighting in the battle of ditch. The fighting was so fierce. It was so fierce. A handful of people fighting an army of 10,000 men gathered from all over Arabia that he had to miss his Zohar prayer and Asr prayer. And they had to make up the prayer at the Maghrib time. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu says that the battle was so fierce that I could only pray with gestures. Because we are constantly in battle. So the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam over and over and over tells us that everything is circumstantial. Sometimes the situations arise where you have to be prepared to face them. And it's not like you are less of a believer. It's like you are fulfilling the rights of yourself on you and the rights of others on you. Now think about it. You may be in perfect health, but somebody else may not be. Somebody else may be diabetic, may have severe lungs issues. Such diseases are more harmful for them than they may be for you. And for God's sake, forbid, if an individual is a carrier and transfers these kind of things to the people who cannot bear them just because I'm so emotional, it is a disservice to that individual. So when Kenosha County today, a few hours, probably an hour ago, released a press release saying that yes, there are no reported cases of coronavirus in the county itself. However, the people are getting tested positive around the county, in Illinois especially, in big numbers. The numbers are on rise. Therefore, we are taking a precautionary measure. As a result, some universities and colleges have decided to extend their spring break to two weeks versus one week. And some local colleges have decided to shut themselves down starting next week, Monday, for three days. Only the instructional piece, because people are in close proximity. However, they will still deliver using alternate models. We are living in the 21st century, the age of internet. There are so many alternate delivery models that can be used to deliver. So the alternate delivery models is that what humans are accustomed to. So how is it possible that when Islam was given as a complete code of life would not have alternates? Because humans do not live in the same situation forever. That's why what the health department says in the Kenosha County, when they released their press release, they said, do not shake hands. When you cough, cough in the tissue paper or cough in your elbow. Some people are not accustomed to that. They just cough everywhere. They cough in their hands and then they shake hands with other people. That's not nice. Wash your hands. Anyway, we have to do that. But now we have to take extra precaution. Now, somebody was telling me, you know, I mean, like, I don't know why people are so, so, and so, and so, telling, do this, do this, do this, do this. I said, well, that's what the health department is saying. They're not making this up. So there are reasons. Instead of getting all emotional about it, we got to be realistic. That's what it is. Got to be realistic. So keeping that realism, you will see that there are so many masajids in the U.S. where the khutbah was not held today. The masjids are closed where for all activities, including the weekend school, the Juma khutbahs, all social gatherings, all events, Till notified. 
And the reason I'm telling you, because that is the case over here too, starting next Juma. The masjid management has decided to postpone all Juma khutbas starting next Friday till notified. And we could not make this decision last minute last night because it was so close. We were not aware if everybody will be able to get the message. But since you're here, that's why I'm telling you as a decision made by the management, the next Juma there will be no khutbah in the masjid, neither the first one nor the second one. Till the masjid decides to notify. Similarly, the Sunday school, the weekend school, which happens on weekends, is also cancelled. All the interfaith activities that were supposed to be held in the masjid are also cancelled. And this is the reason I'm taking all of this time to explain this to you. Because when I explained this to you, some people this morning and last night, they got very emotional. And emotionally, they got outrageous. And it's not a matter to be outrageous or emotional. By the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you may be in perfect health. But when these kind of gatherings happen, we have people from all ages. So you got to take precaution. Even in the classrooms, we have been asked to cancel all gatherings larger than a certain group of people. And if they're coming and sitting in a classroom, they all have to be at least six feet apart from each other. And they have canceled all visitations to nursing homes until and unless the person is dying. All of these precautionary measures are taken why? So that we do not face the circumstances that are happening in Italy that over 10,000 cases were reported and the hospitals cannot take any more patients. They are being left to die. Because they cannot help them. They're, they don't have enough resources to pull to serve so many people. So that's why counties are taking precautionary measures so that they do not have a pool of people pouring into the hospitals and the hospital doesn't have enough beds to serve them. So anyway, you're all learned individuals. You're all educated people. You're all rational people. I would like you all to read it on your own and take some precautions yourself at home and these are precautions to keep yourself and your family healthy and the people around you healthy and there is nothing wrong with that and cleanliness is anyway a big part of your faith so you're not doing anything extraordinary out of the way just make sure before you eat anything to wash your hands if you are if you just washed it 10 minutes ago, that's a common excuse you get from kids. I just washed it. When? <clears throat> just right now. When? Ah, uh, 10 minutes ago? Well, what were you doing for 10 minutes? <laughs> they may be playing with something that the germs got on them, but they don't realize. They still need to wash your hands. Similarly, we as adults, we use keyboards and other touch devices that get being that might have been exposed to different hands. So it's always a good idea to wash it before you eat anything. Not a bad idea. Anyway, the religion asks you to do that. So if you're doing it in the name of religion, what are you doing? You're constantly gaining reward for doing what? Washing your hands. For living a cleaner life. You're getting reward for it. Subhanallah. Because you're doing it with your correct intention of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As well at the same time. As well getting into the practice. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his prophet has told us a very great statement. Innamal a'amalu binniyat. All your actions are driven by the intention. So you're driving gear. D1, D2, D3, D4, doesn't matter what gear you drive in or be a sports gear, is what? Intention. The intention is the main element in all the deeds. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّعًا وَخِيفًا Remember your Lord within yourself in humility and fear 
وَدُونَ الْجَهْرِ مِنَ الْقَوْلِ It doesn't have to be out loud. It can be within your heart. It can be with a soft voice. It does not have to be out loud. بِالْغُدُوِّ وَالْأَصَالِ In the morning and in the evening, but not limited to that. وَلَا تَكُمْ مِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ And that's a blanket statement. Do not be among those people who are heedless. They don't pay attention. They are from the people who are considered الْغَافِل The word غَافِل is also used in other languages besides Arabic. In Urdu, in Persian, and some of the other languages. And it means a person who is lost and unaware of the situation and the circumstances around is considered to be al-ghafil. For example, the person who is so much lost in his thoughts or her thoughts that is unaware of what's going around is also considered al-ghafil. That he is unaware of the circumstances and situation. Do not be al-ghafil. Especially from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Moving on to the first ayah of Surah Al-Anfal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّقُوا And be God conscious. So humility, fear was in the last ayah. Remembrance was in the last ayah. Next surah, first ayah, be God conscious. وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ And amend relationships among yourselves. Fix relationship among yourself. Do not cause distress among yourself. Fix it. أَصْلِحُوا We also have the word sulh. Make peace with each other. وَأَصْلِحُوا ذَاتَ بَيْنِكُمْ وَأَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ and submit in obedience to Allah and His Prophet. In kuntum mu'mineen. If you are indeed a believer. If you are a believer. If you claim you are a believer. If you think you are a believer. Then build these qualities of God consciousness. Amending relationships. Bringing peace and harmony. Do not cause distress. Do not cause fasad. Do not cause fitna. Do not cause things that will disrupt. And then, in obedience to Allah and His Prophet, and these are the qualities that somebody who claims to be a believer should possess or should strive to possess. Next ayah of the same surah, Surah Al-Anfal, ayah number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. The mu'mineen are those people that when the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned to them or they come across, it caused their hearts to fill with trembling and softness and fear. It's a mixed feeling. I cannot use the word fear to explain it. Because the Quran doesn't say it's khawf. Quran doesn't say it's khif. It says, Wajilat qulubuhum. Their hearts tremble in softness. It's an undescribable emotion. It is filled with love and at the same time, a regret. What am I doing? What am I doing? Am I serving him? Or am I serving myself? What am I doing? How are my salahs? Am I just doing a pastime in my salah? Am I just lost in my own thoughts in the salah? What are my steps in life? When they read these ayahs of the Qur'an, when they hear them, وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ And when they are in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's how their hearts are. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا And when the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are recited to them, it increases their faith. Their faith gets stronger. So that means faith is not a stagnant entity. It's not stationary. 
it can move. That's why we say, you have lost faith? Do you have increased in faith? Do you have decreased in faith? You have elevated in faith? All of these different things are showing movement in the status of your heart and belief. So, Zadatum Imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. And they rely on their Lord. They rely on their Lord does not mean you do not take any precautions. Tawakkul doesn't mean to leave everything. Tawakkul means to do your part and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you got to do your part. Because the same Quran says that there is nothing for man except for what he or she works hard for. لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى You have to do your part. Look at the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Don't you think the Burak that took him to the night journey and then from here he ascended to the heavens could have taken him to Medina? In a blink? Don't you think it could have happened very easily with all his companions? But then, if we would have ever come across these kind of circumstances, how would we find examples in his life? لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ In the life of the Prophet, you will find all patterns of your life. How will you find examples in his life then? Don't you think the battle of Uhud could have been over in like this? And we did not have to leave 70 companions? The Prophet did not have to lose his beloved uncle Hamza in that kind of a situation where Hinda did what she did to his body? All of this could have been easily avoided, but then Uswatul Hasana would not have been accomplished. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through His Prophet showed us examples after examples after examples. I've told you this many times that the life that He led, subhanallah, mountain of patience. Born an orphan, loses his mom when he's six, loses his grandfather when he's eight. Born in not worldly things. His breakfast would be zamzam. Maybe eating one meal a day. Full stomach. And Abu Talib knew right from the beginning when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam joins when his kids are eating, the barakah is so much that everybody gets the food and everybody feels satisfied and content. But when Sayyidina Muhammad, even as a kid, is not on that table, then kids are fighting for bread. Nobody gets enough. His barakah was seen at the house of Halima Sa'diyah, the woman who raised him, nursed him. However, when he grows up, he's a shepherd taking care of the goats of Makkah on a very small amount called Qirat. When he grows further, he becomes a tradesperson, goes out and does a trading for Khadija al Kubra, radiallahu anha. Marries, have kids, then loses his sons. Upon losing the son, after he told people about the prophethood, he proclaimed the prophet who he told the Baba'uth, the Bi'tha. Then the people turned against him. And said words to him that are unbearable. Said Muhammad has lost sons. So now he is without roots. Both of his daughters got divorced the same day. The same time. And one of his to be son-in-law spat next to him when he divorced his daughter. Uh, you just start looking at his life one after another. It's a challenge. Despite coming from a very wealthy and honored tribe of the Quraysh, have to live a life 
of a prisoner in th three years with entire tribes of Quraysh, part Banu Hashim and part Banu Muttalib. And then after that, the incident of Ta'if, where he was hit with stones so much that his shoe was filled with blood, migrated to Medina and had to deal with the Munafiqeen, the hypocrites, and the other tribes of Medina who kept breaking the treaty in the middle of the Battle of Ditch, one of the allies breaks the treaty and gives an open passage to these 10,000 men to enter through the other route of Quba. One after another, it's like unbelievable. You read his life and you're like, subhanAllah, one person went through so much. One person, one individual. Why? لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا نُونُ وَالْقَلَمِ وَمَا يَسْطُرُونَ مَا أَنْتَ بِالنِّعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِالْمَجْنُونَ وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُوقٍ عَظِيمٍ we have put you on the highest moral values that the moral values spring from you. So anyway, the bottom line is, those are the things I wanted to bring to you today. Insha'Allah Ta'ala, whenever the masjid management decides to reopen the masjid for the khutbas, as I said earlier, there will be no khutbas, until further notify starting next Friday. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.